All right, so when solving an absolute value equation, the main important thing is to understand what exactly an absolute value equation is or what exactly the absolute value symbol represents. So the basic thing I can do with you or to understand that is let's look at, uh, let me run right over here. The absolute value, the way the easiest represent the absolute value is the absolute distance from 0. So going from solving inequalities, we can go back to our number line. Okay, and let's say that's 1, 2, and 3, and then negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. What the absolute value represents is the absolute distance from 0, right? Pretend like if you're going in one direction or the next, right? Let's say here's your house, right? If you're going, that's positive distance. How far is it away? Here's where you're at. You need to walk to your house. If you go in the other direction, you're going negative distance, right? You're going away from your house. However, you still walked a value, right? You still walked three units. So the absolute value is the absolute value from, th um, from 0. So the absolute value of 3 is 1, 2, 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 1, 2, 3. All right. So the important thing you guys remember is the absolute value always equals a positive value. All right. So when I have absolute value of x, let's say, equals 10, you guys understand that there could be two numbers that could be in for x, right? It could be positive x or it could be a negative x. Does that make sense? OK, there could be two answers. So when we're solving absolute value equations, we're going to be looking for two answers. The answer that makes this positive and the answer that's going to make that negative. All right? So when solving an absolute value equation, you guys can see I wrote down the steps over there, which I'd highly recommend. The first step is, abs is isolate the absolute value sign. Here we can have the absolute value sign is being subtracted by 6. So we need to undo subtracting by 6 by adding 6. So I have absolute value of 2v plus 3 equals 20. All right. Now the next thing is, remember we said this could be a negative number and a positive number, right? This could be negative 10, um, and it could also be 10, right? Or, well, or 10, right? It could be one or the other. So we need to create two cases. We want to create the case where my variable is positive and the case where my variable is going to make a negative value. All right? So my two cases is the positive and the negative. So you can see I write two cases. So to write the positive case, I'm just going to keep the equation exactly as the same. But the important thing is when you create two cases, you don't need the absolute value sign anymore. Absolute value sign just represents absolute distance from 0. So when we create two cases, you don't need that sign. Now, to do the negative, all I'm going to do is, again, write the same thing that was inside the absolute value. But now I'm going to take the negation of the other side. So I'm, you're going to negate it, make it the opposite. All right. Now, step three is just solve. Just like you, got, you guys should be happy with this, right? This is much easier than some of the multi-step problems I gave you. Just solve. That doesn't look like fun. Oh, OK. Yeah, we're good. Then here, I'll subtract by 3. 2v equals negative 20. Oh, 17. What am I doing? Uh, negative 23. Then divide by 2. Divide by 2. v equals a negative 23 divided by 2. OK? Not very fun answers, um, but that's OK. That doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Um, so then last step. Now that I've solved, I have two answers. The last step is to check your solutions. This is very, very, very important for absolute value equations. Because not always are our solutions going to be actual solutions to the equation. So to do that, we have to check the solutions. To check the solutions, what you do is take, the, take your values and plug them back into your equation. So you go back to your original equation. And I'll write absolute value of 2 times. I'll do the first one, 17 over 2, plus 3, minus 6, equals 14. All right, now I'm just going to do this kind of in my head. 2 times 17 over 2, that's like 2 over 1, right? Yes? No question? So the 2's divide to 1. So I'm left with 17 plus 3, which is? 17 plus 3 is? 20. 20. Absolute value of 20 is? 20. 20, 20 minus 6 is? 14, which is equal to 14, which is good. 
Now let's go and check the other solution. Uh, 2 times negative 23 over 2 plus 3 minus 6 equals 14. So negative 23 over 2, again, the 2's are going to divide to 1. Negative 23 plus 3 is? Negative, negative 20. 20. Absolute value of negative 20 is 20. 20 minus 6 is 14 equals 14. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, you have both of your solutions are true, which is nice. However, if you guys might be wondering, well, why are we checking our work? You've got both solutions were true. When would be a case where my um, solution would not be true, where I'd have an extraneous solution? An example, any time when you plug your answer back in, any time you have an absolute value equal to a negative number, you're going to have what we call an extraneous solution or no solution. So any time when you plug your answer back in and you have your absolute value is equal to a negative number, then you are going to have an extraneous solution.